gives you traction. Really interesting working here off of Cape Cod. Totally different than anywhere we've ever worked before, Africa or Mexico. You know, these fish aren't exposed to the cage diving industry. So they're the most nervous, wild fish we've ever dealt with. We're seeing fish come into the ship, you know. In the last week, we've seen seven, eight, nine sharks, but they're hidden and gone. They're not sticking around. We can't get them interested in what we're doing. Um, we, are, we do feel like we're making progress toward that, inching closer, uh, but that's been the biggest challenge. I think the wildest body of great white sharks we've seen anywhere in the world. And I mean that in a good way. Wild like untouched, virgin, the way they're supposed to be. Is it uncommon now for, uh, let's say, a section of Cape Cod as opposed to another area that the white sharks, uh, the great white sharks are coming to? No, it's not uncommon. I mean, they gather in places around the world like this, you know, the tip of Africa, the bottom of Australia, the islands off of uh, northern Mexico and Baja, and off, off our islands, the fair lines off of central and northern California. So, no, it is, this is a place where white sharks should be. When you look at what's on the beach, when you look at the water temperature, when you look at other places around the world that are in the same lat latitude, uh, they should be here, and they are. And you know, I think you're seeing that we're starting to see them a little bit more because the seals are piling up on the beach. The question is, is are the numbers going up? Are the numbers going down? What are they doing here? Are they really here because of the seals, or were they always here and we're just seeing them more because they're swinging into the seals and we happen to be on land too? Lots of questions and lots of unknown. And an expedition like this, the objective is to fill out in that unknown with a bunch of facts. Uh, on Wednesday, three beaches, local beaches, were closed. There was a sighting of two sharks in the area. They closed the beach. It's not the first time something like this has happened. They obviously didn't catch the sharks. Uh, are we overreacting to the sharks in the water, or it's, uh, it's the right move? Well, I think, for me, if I was standing on a beach and I saw a white shark, I would get out of the water. I don't think you need to be a PhD or rocket scientist to, to have a little common sense and street smarts. Um, but other than that, I think what we got to realize is I can't even get them to come to a boat and I am trying very, very hard. They are nervous. They're not looking for a lot of interaction with us. And the odd accident occurs. So, uh, you know, I think it's just demonstrating common sense. You don't need to be swimming around a bunch of seals at dawn or dusk. But again, you don't need to be a genius to know that. White sharks eat seals at dawn and dusk. Um, so we just need more data. We just need to capture these sharks. We need to open source all that data to the community leaders so they can leverage it for public safety. Our scientists can leverage it for policy to create a sustainable future for the sharks because they're the balance keepers. Make no mistake, if there are not a lot of sharks in the ocean, we will not have an ocean full of fish to consume and eat as human beings. And you know, sharks are the balance keepers, the lions of the ocean. There's just no robust path forward without lots of sharks for the ocean. And so we have to have the fundamental data to understand where's the nursery so we can protect it. Where are the breeding sites so we can protect it and give them some room to succeed so that while we eliminate unsustainable practices like finning, they recover in a robust way. And so having all this new data, getting a handle of the rhythm of the shark's life, when does it arrive here? When does it depart here? What is it doing here? Where is it when it's not here? All of that kind of rhythm of its life, its migratory patterns, once we understand that, then we can use that data to make usage decisions on the ocean. Now, is each year different, like this summer is different from last summer? We have seen in other parts of the world that no, it's a cycle that repeats itself. The male sharks have a one-year migration. The female sharks have a two-year migration from the breeding site. So once you just get a, your hand and your head around that kind of cycle, you have information to make all kinds of decisions. Like when are we gonna have our triathlon? Well, we know the sharks are here for three months a year breeding. Maybe we shouldn't schedule it in the middle of that window. It's just common sense decisions with new data we've never had.